Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Hauser. Welcome to Caring Medical Florida here in Fort Myers, Florida. In 2021, I did a prolotherapy symposium for doctors who were just getting into prolotherapy. We thought anyone interested in prolotherapy or if you're a doctor just getting into prolotherapy, we feel that these videos would be very in informative for you. I sure hope you enjoy them. One of my favorite topics is ligament physiology, and we don't see terms commonly in medicine that relate to ligaments. Example, you haven't ever heard the term ligamentology, the study in science of ligaments. You haven't really seen the term ligamentosis, like ligamentosis is degeneration of a ligament, but we have tendinosis, 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 tendinosis. And we have it in the medical literature in large measure because you can see it on an MRI and then there's surgeries for it and this sort of thing. But ligaments, most of the ligaments in the body, they're like one inch, they're like 10 millimeters, half an inch, two millimeters. You have a lot of ligament information on the anterior cruciate ligament. That's where we get a lot of our ligament information from the anterior cruciate ligament, but primarily because there's a surgical option for it. And that's a huge ligament, you know, 40 millimeters. So let's agree it's, you know, an inch and a half, but most of the ligaments, they're itsy bitsy. So when we think about ligament injury of various joints, it's important to understand what's the main ligament. If I was going to treat one ligament, like for the hip, Hip instability is primarily going to be from anterior subluxation, the anterior section of the hip, that's the iliofemoral ligament. In the lower back, the, some of the more important ligaments are the sacro, iliac sacro tuberous. In the, in the neck, the spine, it's the capsular ligaments around the facet joints. The knee, you know, obviously if there's an ACL ligament injury, like then the anterior cruciate ligament would be an important one to treat. In the foot, it's the spring ligament. The elbow, medially, it's going to be the ulnar collateral ligament. And laterally, it's going to be the radial and the annular ligament. Going over definitions, because you can't go over them enough. Dynamic structural medicine is where the field of structural medicine has to go. How posture and motion affect human structure, how posture and motion affect human structure, and how that ch those changes in human structure affect what? Health and disease. The major assault on the human body is in the neck. The neck structure is just completely getting broken. The neck is a super highway for the fluid flow, the arterial flow, venous flow into the brain, out of the brain. And of course, the nerve impulses from the body to the brain, go through the neck, and then when the, when the brain wants to do something, the nerve impulses have to, go, have to go through the neck. So obviously if there's ligamentous joint instability, which is destructive motion of bones from ligament injury, if it's occurring in the neck, that's of course gonna, could screw up nerve impulse, electricity going into and out of the brain. And once those impulses start getting blocked, you get what? The vagus nerve impulses start getting blocked, then the body starts losing its regenerative capacity. If the vagus nerve impulses start getting blocked in the stomach, you may not make stomach acid. You may not have peristalsis of your stomach good the pyloric valve may not open well, so the net result's gonna be what? Food just sits there, so then you get nauseated, then you get bloating, then before long you can't eat much, then you start losing weight. So we have patients right now, I'm treating patients that have feeding tubes, like I'm treating patients from their neck and suppose they have feeding tubes. We, do, we have one patient that recently that had a feeding tube so I was actually the one that pulled out the feeding tube. So, and that took maybe within a month of the person coming here. Some of the patients that, co that go come to Caring Medical, they actually live here for a while just because the severity of their cases are so severe that they need to live here while the staff and I treat them. 
Prolotherapy, again, is the injection of substances at the ligamentous attachments to bone to strengthen them. Joint instability involves destructive motions of bone. Prolotherapy resolves the destructive motions of bone. So write that down. Prolotherapy resolves the destructive motions of bones. Prolotherapy resolves the destructive motions of bone. This is histology, so this is a medial collateral ligament. When they do die and they look at it, it's almost all type 1 collagen. Type 1 collagen makes up like 90% of the collagen in the body. Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, the collagen in Ehlers-Danlos syndrome that's loose is the type 1 collagen. Prolotherapy is great at stimulating the tightening, the strengthening of type 1 collagen. Type 2 collagen is in cartilage. Type 3 collagen is in you know, mostly in the blood vessels and that. Again, the word collagen comes from the word glue. So when, doc, when I say, like I have my staff here, when I say Dr. Hutchinson is going to get you in alignment, we're going to help the curve, and I'm going to glue, glue it in, it's actually kind of accurate because the word collagen actually means glue. So collagen gives the stability, the tightness, the restriction of excessive joint motion. It's the collagen within the ligaments. And the reason why Dr. Hackett named it prolotherapy because the injection of solutions into ligaments caused the proliferation of cells with the ultimate uh, result of tightening the ligament like it was a well, like you welded it. And you know, this is basically ligaments, they're wavy, they're wavy. The unloaded collagen fibers in a relaxed ligament. So a ligament has a little bit of give, but it's not that much give. It has a little bit of give because when it stretches, the waviness goes away. And if we look at the elongation of the typical ligament, it's only like one millimeter. Physiologically, when we're moving and we're doing things, the ligaments are only actually stretching basically about a millimeter. Once you get beyond that, forces go way, way, way up. We said this is shearing forces, torsional forces. These are the worst forces for ligaments. So that would be like the SI ligament. The SI ligaments, when you bend and twist, that's going to be the worst for the ligaments, like in the lower back. But no ligament can handle millions and millions of force that occurs when a person looks at a cell phone for hours and hours and hours. Compressive forces are good for articular cartilage. So the body loves gravity. So, the, you know, like doing a squat or whatever, the body loves that. What the body doesn't like so much, you know, is twisting forces. And right? Isn't it true? Most of the exercise classes twist, twist, twist. When I was doing Iron Man, I would be in the gym and I would see these personal trainers taking somebody who's out of shape and doing all kinds of crazy hammers and all these things on somebody who, you know, would have a hard time doing one squat. It's like the body loves compression. After prolotherapy, it's good it, from an exercise standpoint, just keep the keeping this plane, you know, not start doing things, you know, where you're twisting and all that stuff. Because those put so much forces on the ligaments. So basically, as the ligament stretches, at some point, at some point, the ligament is going to start to give. So this is like the prolotherapy zone. But if you don't get it treated at some point, boom, the, the ligament's going to fail, the ligament's going to tear. So once a ligament starts getting stretched and it starts getting torn a little, that's the prolotherapy zone. But when it's torn completely, like an ACL, that's when you would often need a surgery. And again, this just shows the most common motions that lead to ligamentous joint instability. So it's important in the thoracic area, it's rotation, the lower back, it's slouching in a chair. The hip and the shoulder, it's abduction and, sh and external rotation, which leads to ligament injuries. Obviously, in the foot, if somebody overpronates, that's a common one. In the ankle, it's usually inversion. And then, depending on which part of the sh el elbow, the uh, lateral part is going to be excessive pronation, like somebody who 
you know, has a job where they have to do that a lot. And obviously pitching or throwing or tennis playing puts a lot of strain on the ulnar collateral ligament medially. The wrist, a common thing is like somebody who chops a lot, boom, 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 boom. They often get TFCC complex uh, cartilage tears there. The fingers is often gripping the big toe. There's a lot of stress with running. Ligaments can stretch slowly over time. That's why in athletics, we want to do some kind of warm up because you got to get like the ligaments, they got to get warmed up, they stretch a little bit because if you start out boom, you start out boom, then the ligaments haven't had any time to get, get rid of the crimp in them and then boom, they can, they can just tear. So joint instability really, in my opinion, is the reason for all these things. So if we just remove the bone spur, if we just do shots inside the joint and don't treat the ligaments, we just do PRP into the meniscal tear, we just do PRP or stem cells into the tendon, the rotator cuff tendon or, or the plantar fascia or the Achilles tendon or patellar tendon, we don't treat the underlying joint instability. Often the results are temporary and we want to think like healers. How can we heal a plant, chronic plantar fasciitis? Well, it's not even fasciitis, fasciosis, degenerated plantar fascia. How can we get the person's problem resolved, like what has to happen? So we have to assess the ankle, the foot for instability, treat the instability along with the plantar fascia, and then that often, often can resolve it.